Hey everybody! Today we're going to be making an expressive speech text dialogue system in JavaScript. Something critical in a game's presentation is how text and dialogue speeches are revealed to the players. Rather than just showing the text all at once, we can kind of play with the speed and timing of which the words are revealed, and that can make the characters feel more alive and make everything feel more conversational. This is a system I put in all my games, and I'm stoked to show it to you today. But it's not just limited to games. If you're working on a web app or a website, and you want to play with different effects for revealing text on the site, you can totally use this. And now I understand you may be building your game in a front-end framework like React, Vue, Angular, whatever you like. That's totally cool. We're going to use vanilla JavaScript for this today just to get the concepts across, but feel free to port this to any front-end system that you're using. Now before we get started here, quick reminder that I upload JavaScript game dev tutorials and general game dev content to this YouTube channel. If you're interested in that sort of thing, please subscribe. So let's take a quick look at the CodePen demo for today's video. Uh, what I have here in the HTML section is just a div with class of text on it. And there are some pre-written styles in here that give us this um, kind of text boxy feel, the white background and a little bit of a shadow. And then also within text, I have a SVG uh, with class name corner. And this is absolutely positioned to the bottom right here of the text box. It's just an SVG triangle, kind of gives it a nice little speechy design. In the HTML here, you'll see there's a comment that says text gets injected here. Basically, when we get to the JavaScript side of this tutorial, we're going to start injecting span tags into this text container, and they're going to end up going right here. Moving on to CSS quickly here, really not much going on in here, just the text and corner like we talked about, some background colors on the body. Um, up here, I have some styles that we're going to bring in later, and we'll talk about that as we go. And we are starting with zero JavaScript. We're going to fill this all in right now. Now, the first thing we want to do is kind of capture the dialogue that we're going to say in a little bit of a data structure here. So what I'll say is uh, text lines is going to be an array. This is going to be an array of phrases. So it could be like, hey, what's up kind of thing. Uh, but just this on its own doesn't really give us a lot to work with. But what we want to do is add in some data that lets us maybe specify kind of the behavior of hey and the behavior of what's up. Maybe those two phrases are going to be revealed a little bit differently. So what I'll do is actually turn these into objects instead of strings. So we'll say um, the string is hey. We'll do that for both of them. And now the first bit of detail I want to add is a speed. And the speed is going to indicate how quickly this line of text is going to roll out. So imagine you have a cutscene in your game where a character is nervous or confused, their speech speed might be slower, but if they're excited or angry, their speech might be faster. That's where these speeds come in. And so I'll just add speed on here. We'll say 20. This is going to be milliseconds. Add that down here as well. What I like to do with speeds, though, is rather than just defining the value right here in the individual line, I like to come up here and make kind of a map of all the different speeds that are available for us to use. Uh, so we'll say it's like an object called speed, and we'll have different values. So we'll say maybe normal is like 70, um, fast can be 40. These are going to be milliseconds again. So the higher the number, the slower the delay. We'll fill a few more of these out. And now down here in text lines, instead of having a hard-coded 20, I'll say speeds.normal. Speeds.normal here. Let's maybe add one more line. And this one will be faster. So we'll say speeds.fast. This is nice because we have a system in place where if the normal speed feels too slow, we can just come up here and tinker with it without needing to edit each individual line. And now I'll come up here and just add a nice uh, selector to get a reference to our container element. So document query selector, the class text. Remember in HTML, that's just this much right here. What that's going to do is give us a clean reference to the container so we can start injecting things into it. And so now what we want to do is start taking our text lines here and transforming them into DOM nodes that we can then inject into our text container over here. Um, and so to do that, we're going to take each one of these lines and turn it into a DOM element. But it's important that we don't only capture the string as a whole, because to get this effect just right, we really want to stamp one character at a time. So what we're going to do is create a new array that includes a span for each one of these characters of every single text line in this array here. So first, we're going to create a new characters array. We'll start empty characters. 
Next, we're going to iterate through our text lines. So we'll say text lines dot for each, and then you know the text line. Inside here, what we're going to do is split up the line string. So that's going to be like this much right here. And we're going to split that into its own array and then also iterate through that for each character. And now if you're a fan of more functional array methods where you want to like kind of map and reduce this to get the same effect, that's totally cool. Go nuts. To keep this simple for the tutorial's sake, we're just going to use two loops here. Now for each character in the string, we want to go ahead and create a span element uh, just in memory here. So we'll say span is a new you know document.create element with type span. From there, we can take the span and add its text content, and that's just going to be character. So like, you know, W, H. And now let's go ahead and throw it into our text container. Remember that we selected it up here as container. So we can go ahead and just say container dot append child and then pass in our span. And now you can see that we have our spans. They're showing up there. We got some spacing problems that we'll address in a second. But if I inspect here, you can see that each one is an individual span tag. And that's exactly what we want, because now we have control over every single character. So to address the spacing problems really quick, what's happening is that our text lines right here are strings, and they don't end in spaces. So hey, it ends right away. What's up? It ends right away. And so in the DOM, you know, the Y and the W here are just butting up right against each other. So to fix that, you can either manually put a space at the end of every string, and that'll do it. Uh, but I find that gets kind of annoying over time. And so what I like to do is come down here and actually automatically add a space to anything that's not the last line. So that's just a quick length check. So it's like if the current index, whoops, and it looks like we need to add the index. So line for each will also give us back the index. If that's less than the text line's length, um, minus one, taking out that plus one problem, then this string here, we're just gonna go ahead and add another space to it. So plus equals a space. And so now what this is effectively doing is just looking at these lines and saying, if you're not the last one, go ahead and add a space to the end, just like that. So we don't have to manually do it every time. I'm gonna go ahead and add a period right here because it's bothering me. Okay, so to actually take control now and give each one of these spans the desired behavior that we want, we need to go ahead and start actually adding data about that span to our characters array. We created it earlier, but we haven't used it yet. To do that, for each span, we're just going to push into the characters array with some um, specifications on kind of how we want it to behave. So the first thing we're going to do is push an object and we want to include the span tag itself as a reference. That way we have a clear DOM reference to like manipulate that element. Um, we want to tell ourselves if it's a space or not. Sometimes uh, knowing if it's a space will change the timing that you want to roll out. We'll cover that in a second. We're going to go ahead and take note of the speed that was defined on each text line. So for each line that we're iterating through right now, we're going to include that on the character itself. And so I, I call it delay after. That's going to be line.speed. Later on in the tutorial, we're going to cover classes that can be put on each individual span. And so that will also live in our data structure up here. So we can just include that now. But they don't exist yet. So what I'm going to say is line.classes, which is what they will be called. But if they're not there, just default to an empty array. So now that we've filled our characters array with a bunch of little pieces of data, one for each character we have on the screen, we have everything we need to start revealing these characters individually rather than just displaying them all at once. So to do that, we're going to utilize some CSS. So I'll reveal the CSS that we don't have in there right now. And I'll go ahead and just uncomment this to put it back in. And so what we have here is any span inside of text is going to start with opacity zero. Uh, once the span gains the class revealed, we're going to set the opacity to one. And then later on, we're going to utilize some of this uh, classes and the class array thing to add things like different colors. Any span that has a certain class on it, like green, you can use that to style it, style the color, or maybe add like an effect to it, like a shaking effect. Whatever you want to do, you can go nuts. And now you might be wondering, why are we putting them all in the DOM all at once like this? See that we're just going willy-nilly and putting them all in and starting them invisible. Why not just put them in one at a time? 
And the reason I like to do that is to control layout breaks, where if you are printing out a long word, we want to make sure that it doesn't start over here at the end of a line. And then when it adds, you know, when it hits a certain character amount to break to the next line, the whole word breaks down here. I find that to be really kind of disjointing. Furthermore, it can be really performant for the browser to just be changing opacity on things because opacity changes don't cause repaints. Whereas if you're constantly adding new text to the screen, that can be, um, at scale, that can be more expensive for the browser. So that said, now that we are set up to start changing opacity on things, what we're going to do is add a new function that's going to actually do that for us. And so we'll call it, you know, reveal one character. And this is actually going to take in a whole list. It's going to be a recursive function. And if you're not familiar with recursion, that basically means that this function is going to continue to call itself until a process is done. Um, and so we'll cover that in a second. But uh, first thing we want to do is grab the list and get the first character out of it. And so we'll say the next is going to be list.splice to grab something from an array and remove it from an array. Um, the zeroth entry, so that's going to be the first one. And then the length of the grab, we only want to grab the first one. So we'll say one for the second argument there. Um, this is going to give us back a list of everything that we removed from the array. And we only want the first one in the list because there's only one in the list. And so I'm going to add the brackets here for zero. So now next is going to be just one of these objects here, the first one in the list. And so if you remember, um, each one of these objects has a reference to the span that we created and injected to the DOM. And so next here is going to have next.span on it. And what we can do is add that class list. Let's see, what do we call it? Um, revealed. So classless.add revealed. And now we're not actually calling this function yet, so I'll go ahead and call it down here to kick us off. And the list we're going to give it is this characters list that we created above. Now when this runs, you see that it operates on the first thing in the list, which is our first H. And now to keep this triggering, so it keeps revealing letters in our list, uh, we want to call this function again. And like I said before, we want to do that from within this function as soon as this one's done. Uh, but we need to make sure we add a delay to it. Otherwise, if it just keeps going, it's going to feel the same as instantly doing everything. And so that's where we use a, a timeout. So the delay for the timeout is going to be like delay is going to be um, next dot delay after. Remember that is uh, kept right here, just right next to the span. And so now we'll come down here and give us some more room here and say that if the list dot length is greater than zero, then we're safe to call this again. Uh, but what we, what we want to do is use that timeout. So, so after a short delay, which is going to be the delay that we captured up here, we're going to go ahead and call this again, passing in the same list. And so the idea here is that our list is, um, see that it's working over here. Uh, we're constantly modifying the list by chopping one off of it. So every time this function runs, the list is getting one smaller, starts at like 10, and then we'll call it again. By this time, it'll be 9, 8, 7, 6. That's why we have this check here, so that when it's finally 0, we stop calling this function. Um, in recursion, I think that's called a breaking condition, where you always want to check uh, if this function should run again. If you don't have a check like that, then you have an infinite loop on your hands, and those are no fun. The next thing I like to do for like presentational sake is to opt out of the delay if we are on a space character. Um, without that, it can kind of cause a weird kind of jankity feel. And so what we'll say here is that if we turn the space flag on, we'll say um, then it should be zero delay. But otherwise, if it's not a space, then we'll use the delay that was specified by the string. You can see here if I get it to play again. And now the text scrolls a little bit better. It doesn't have those weird delays on the space character where nothing's happening. Now the last thing we're going to do is start to utilize that green class that we set up before. So what this is saying is that if one of these spans also has the class green on it, it's going to change the color. We already included the class here, the classes array here, when we were ripping apart and creating our characters array. And so now it's just a matter of adding it to a config over here. So on any of these lines, we can just go ahead and say the classes for all these should be green. 
And of course, we actually need to add that class to our span element. So down here, when we're actually changing the opacity of uh, the individual spans, we can also go ahead and add in any classes that we specified on that uh, line itself. So just paste it in a block here. It says on any of the classes that we included, go ahead and loop through them and also include that on the span itself. And now over here, you can see that text is green. So this is cool because if you wanted to highlight character names or important things in the game or whatever in different ways or add different effects to different parts of the speech, you can do that with this little system. Okay, so that wraps up the core system. Uh, there's still many features we could add to this. Like I mentioned before, we could maybe try some shaking effects on certain characters in the line. We could add a key press that kind of warps you to the end of the line if the player doesn't want to sit and wait for all of the dialogue to roll out. Uh, we could also add multiple pages so that maybe first line of text appears and then that goes away and then another text comes in maybe for longer pieces of speech and whatnot i'll leave all those for future enhancements for you to take on and really make the system your own if you got some value out of this video i really appreciate if you hit the like button and if you're into this kind of thing please be sure to subscribe and if you're working on a game of your own join our Discord. We have a community of people that are making and playing indie games, so please come join us. Tell us about your project. We'd love to see you there. That's all for today. Thank you all. See you next time.